So this one is a phase three trial testing new treatments on top of standard of care for men with de novo metastatic prostate cancer. Uh, here during ASCO in 2021, uh, we are reporting the very first results of a trial that of abiraterone in men receiving standard treatment with conventional hormonal therapy plus dostaxel chemotherapy. So until 2015, a conventional hormonal therapy, uh, which is really androgen deprivation therapy, was used as a standard of care for men with the nerve metastatic disease. Uh, of course, it typically worked, but not for long, and patients typically progressed after a year or so. And since uh, this time, we've been fortunate to see a number of positive phase three trials, establishing first verbal of the Staxel chemotherapy in the space, and then that of uh, next generation hormonal agents, abiraterone, apalutamide, and zalutamide, and then also that of radiation therapy directed to the primary. So this is great, but having said that, what we don't really know is should we combine these new treatments uh, in uh, all the patients uh, with a metastatic disease? And this is exactly the question the PEACE-1 phase three trial is asking. So regarding the design of PEACE-1, PEACE-1 is a two by two phase three trial where patients are all receiving standard of care. And in the trial, it was mostly ADT plus the stack cell. And then they are randomized to receive either standard of care alone or standard of care plus abiraterone, standard of care plus radiation therapy directed to the primary site, or standard of care plus abiraterone plus radiation therapy. Again, here at ASCO, what we are reporting are the first data regarding the efficacy of abiraterone on top of standard of care with ADT plus dostaxel, again, plus or minus radiation. So uh, the median follow-up for this analysis is approximately 3.5 years. What we found was that abiraterone very significantly improves the co-primary endpoint of radiographic progression-free survival. And actually what we found was a reduction by half in the risk of radiographic progression or death. When it comes to medians, what we saw was a median of two years for RPFS in the control arm with ADT plus dostaxel, and uh, it was improved to four years and a half when abiraterone was added on top of ADT plus dostaxel. So this means a two years and a half of additional radiographic uh, progression-free survival for these men when they are receiving abiraterone on top of chemo-hormonal treatment, which is really big, of course, and very clinically meaningful. So this was supported by the other means at assessing PFS. So for example, when, you, when looking at time to castration resistance, uh, it was more than doubled, uh, favoring again abiraterone. Also, when we focused on symptomatic defined progression-free survival, we also saw a twice or more than twice longer uh, PFS favoring the abiraterone arm. So again, all the means at measuring PFS favored abiraterone, which was really fantastic. So uh, in terms of safety, the news are also very reassuring. For example, the incidence of neutropenic fever uh, for these men receiving ADT plus dostaxel was the same with or without a baratron 5% incidence in both arms. And this also apply, generally speaking, to the hematological toxicity related to dostaxel. Some other side effects typical of dostaxel, such as fatigue or GI toxicity, were actually lower in the baratron arm, maybe thanks to uh, the uh, co prescription of, of prednisone. Regarding side effects of abiraterone, uh, they were actually as expected with an excess in hypertension, hypokalemia, and transaminase increase, but it was actually modest. For example, regarding hypertension, the incidence was 12% in the um, abiraterone arm versus 8% in the control arm, so no big difference, to be honest. So I think we have clearly demonstrated that adding abiraterone to androgen deprivation therapy plus dostaxel very clearly improves 
radiographic progression-free survival and progression-free survival, generally speaking. Given the magnitude of the benefit, I think this is already practice changing. Should we really, to be honest, deny two years and a half of good life without uh, progression to all the patients? Honestly, I don't think so, regardless what the overall survival data uh, will be in the future. Regarding overall survival, uh, I hope we can report uh, data perhaps right after the summer. We are actually currently uh, conducting a novel survival sweep to try to collect the data and analyze uh, them on time uh, during the summer. I think generally speaking, we've been able to provide clear progresses to all the patients since 2015. And it becomes, of course, very important uh, for the patients to better understand how best to combine these new treatments, including chemotherapy, next generation hormonal agents, and radiation therapy. The data we are providing today with PS1 are the very first uh, regarding those questions. And actually, I think uh, they are really good, uh, clearly in favor of, of combining right now uh, ADT, the Stark, and Baratran. We should have more data regarding the radiation therapy question in the future, uh, perhaps in a year or two. And of course, this will be very important, especially for men with oligometastatic disease, to better understand how best to combine local treatments with systemic intensified treatments. Mm -hmm.